I'm Julie Faye Van Balzer. Let's bring new makers into the movement with kid-friendly projects. Now, Mistel Kirking is here to show us how to paint, well, a cup, right? We're doing sort of a study of a picture of a cup. Yes. Okay, so if we look at the finished piece, you can see here, this is actually what you told me is kind of a fantasy cup, and I think mm -hmm. this would be a great way to get kids interested in knowing that they don't have to draw realistically. Yes. They can really just figure out something kind of mix and matchy. Right. So how do we sort of get started with this whole creative process? Well, I think a lot of times people are inspired, but it's overwhelming because there's a lot to be inspired by. So one of my tricks is to pull apart the things that interest me and then put them back together. It's like reinventing them, but it's with things that are interesting to you. Cool okay. idea. So, so now obviously we're starting with cups and you told me that cups have three parts. Mm -hmm. So what are those three parts? Well, you've got the mouth, the body, and the handle. So the mouth is obviously what you see in the actual cup. The yes. body is the part that holds anything and the handle is what obviously you're going to carry. Yeah. And I know you have some small drawings here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So what I did, I went to Pinterest one day and I looked at a lot of different cups and I just sketched out the different parts of the cup um, so that nothing remain the same and I took favorite images so I, you've noticed that I have some pink designations here and that's how I built this cup I just put them together randomly so you're making your fantasy cup of what yes. you wish a cup looked like yep cool and now what are the green markings um, that is something I'm going to show you now so I am going to start with the body of this one and none of this has to be perfect you can use your eraser and go back and tweak things yeah, because I'm noticing already that the cup you're drawing here is much deeper than the one that's there. And we're going to call that artistic license. And yes. what a great message for kids yep. that things don't have to be anything other than what they feel like at the moment. Right. I always think that sketches are guides. You can change them as you're working, like the mouth just got a lot deeper as well. And then I'm going to use this handle. You know what's amazing though? I think it's the same as when we look up at a cloud and we want it to be something. I want to recognize that as an object. So mm -hmm. no matter what you do, I'm absolutely going to see it as a cup, whether it's perfect or imperfect or anything in exactly. between. Yeah. So I see you have one there that obviously you took a little more time yes. with. Yes. Okay, so now what I want to do, that I've got my cup going, I want to dress it up. And this is a study, so I want to keep it quick. And to do that, I'm going to use collage but I want everything to fit really quickly and easily. So I'm using deli paper. You can use any translucent paper to- I'll say a tracing paper yep. or anything, but for yep. people who aren't familiar with deli paper, it's used to wrap- um, Food. Yeah, sandwiches, <laughs> yeah. right? So you just yeah. take it right off the deli counter. Yep. Uh, so I am just tracing um, the body and I've got Voila, one cut out here already. And if you can hand me the glue yeah. stick scissors and the collage paper, absolutely, I'll show you what I do. So this collage paper isn't big enough, I feel like. Right, it won't fit over the body. So I've got two pieces that I'm going to use. And this again is also where you, where your own creative eye, your own aesthetic comes so in. So I was gonna say, how do you decide whether to put the blue on top or the yellow on top? And do you make them equal parts? Do you make one more? Like, I don't know how you make that decision. Yeah, you know what? This. Again, it's a study, so there isn't a right answer. You just have to try it and see if you like it. I am going to use more blue because uh, I like the pattern that is left here. So I'm just going to do a quick um, stroke. Oh, so you're of, not even taking a lot of time to glue that together. No, no. And then I'm going to put a little bit right here in the middle on the right side of the image. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like this. And I'm going to flip this over and... And of course, you Position could use a repositionable glue stick so that you could pull that right off when you were done with it. You yeah. don't have to use a permanent adhesive or anything right. like that. And then you're just going to begin cutting. So okay. this is basically the glue stick is just to hold everything in place for the cutting. Right. So that when you're done, right. you get a perfectly shaped, or the, let's say yeah. an imperfectly shaped. <laughs> right. And now what you get to do is take your study as far as you want to. You can do a finished painting like this, or you can just add a little color to get yourself. Um, now, just so I'm clear before we start, is this a single strip of paper running through two other papers? Is this three pieces of paper? This is two pieces. So okay. it's a larger piece, and then I use the same template and cut the, the smaller piece to size. Oh, so it's like the rules are different every single time. They are. The only idea is just to get some sort of paper and a template. Yes. 
Yes. Now, you're using a water-soluble crayon, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and why are you using a water-soluble crayon as opposed to a regular crayon? Because, again, for the speed. Because <laughs> I can get <laughs> color on here very easily and quickly. Mm. Now, I noticed you mixed a couple different colors to mm -hmm. get that particular shade of brown. Mm -hmm. um, really, that was for no reason. It's just because I You know I what I was it. actually going to say before you started wiping at it is I was like, oh, I love how you just went over the edge and it makes things not so like precise and hard yeah. and I like those sort of soft feeling edges. Yeah. And now you're mixing in acrylic paint and I noticed you, you didn't clean your brush and you're not no. staying in the lines there, Mistel. Nope, I'm not. I, you know what, I think it's more interesting when you allow yourself to move outside of the lines. There's um, more texture and um, just visual interest that you get. One of the other thing that I like so much too about working with a dirty brush is I can see in your turquoise, you've got some of the brown, so that's bringing that color in. Mm -hmm. In the yellow, you had some of the blue, making it kind of green. And so that the colors all sort of start to come together, you know what I mean, even though you're using a bunch of disparate colors. Yes. Yep. And now uh, you're using the wrong end of the paintbrush. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but what a great technique for scratching in. Yeah, yeah. So now I noticed that you're working very primarily on the cup. For the background, are you gonna let things dry or are you gonna work on that immediately right away? I'm gonna go right to it. If it were going to be a finished painting, I would probably give it more time. But again, you know, I'm thinking I just wanna learn, I wanna grow my creative vocabulary. So let's throw some color on here and see what happens with it. And you know, working on a board is a great way Way to sort of take the pressure away from it being a really finished work of art because now is. it can just be super fun and you don't have to worry about it and then I don't know what do you do with all the boards that you make do you display them around your home do you use them as art journal covers what do you do with them you know that last one is a really good idea I haven't done that but I'm gonna try it um, Typically what I'll do is once I kind of get the study where I want it, I'll push it further and do a finished painting with it. Oh, so these really yeah. are just small samples. Like when you go to a museum and you see the study in the sketchbook or the smaller painting, you're really, you're really following the fine art masters. <laughs> That's awesome. So what kind of are the finishing up steps that we would do here? Well, for me, it would be tons more layers because uh, I wouldn't... Um, well, I was going to say, I can see that in your finished piece here where you have the little white dots yeah. and the sort of gentle, yeah. you know, frame around and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yes, for this one, I kind of put it into a story. It's like a, it's supposed to be a storefront window. <laughs>